Welcome back to the Audulous Module Library tutorial. This is 1.6, Clock Dividers and Multipliers. Uh, this might be a little overwhelming at first. It's kind of the biggest tutorial patch we've seen so far, but we'll break it down into uh, individual pieces, and you'll see it's not so uh, complicated. So we'll start first with reading. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because this one's a little bigger. So, okay. Uh, it can be useful to have access to multiple subdivisions of a clock signal. For that, you can use either a clock divider or multiplier. If you shift between uh, divided by 8 and divided by 16 setting on the clock module, the output of the clock divider will be as such. So we can, we're on divided by 8 right now, so we're looking at this column here. So we have a, at the tempo 120 divided by 8, and at the 1 that's going through here, that's the 8th note, right? That's to be expected. So if it's divided by 1, that's the 8th note. Divide by 2, we have a quarter note. 3 is the 3 eighth note, 4 is the half note, 8 divided by 8 equals 1, so that equals 1 measure. Divided by 16, 2, 4, and 8 measures. So the longest clock period we have coming off of here is 8 measures long in between each other relative to this 8th note pulse that we have coming here at 120 beats per minute. If we shift up to the 16th uh, note, the uh, divided by 1 is now the 16th note, and everything kind of shifts down one. So this is the eighth note, the three sixteenth note, quarter note, half note measure, and the longest we have now is four measures up to here. Uh, you know, we, we're toggling here between the divided by eight and divided by 16, and we're looking at the appropriate column and the charts next to each module to determine their outputs. That's what we're doing right here right now. Uh, so if we need a longer uh, division than eight or four measures, so we'll go back down to eight here, uh, you can string multiple dividers or multipliers together to extend their outputs. So here we have uh, the sync output that is connected here just so that these all stay in sync. And then we, ha we have the gate output that's going from the, uh, the longest division here, the, the, the highest division here, which is in the divided by 8 clock, 8 measures, or in divided by 16, 4 measures. And when that goes to another clock divider, again, it gets divided by 2, so then that's 16 measures total, or divided by 4, 32 measures, or 8, 64 measures. And in the 16th clock, it's just shifted down once so you have 8, 16, and 32 measures, right? So this is how we can start with a master clock that is all, that's always, it's kind of your main clock that has all of the, uh, the, the tempo is, is coming from that, and then it's determining the tempo of everything else. So we're taking from this one uh, clock and dividing it out into all these different subdivisions that we can use creatively in ways that we'll see in subsequent patches. Uh, right now, it's, it's um, I'm gonna read this note here, you don't have to remember all of what these subdivisions equal, okay? This is only, and this also only makes sense in 4-4 time. The idea is to understand how these modules work and then use them appropriately. So you don't need to remember all this chart in your head. It's more about just knowing this clock divider takes a signal, it takes a fast signal and divides it down into slower signals, okay? Um, now we'll go down to the multiplier, which does the opposite, which it takes a slow signal and multiplies it into faster signals, okay? Uh, the clock multiplier module is fed with the eighth note, uh, uh, so the eight output right here, this eight output um, of the clock divider. With an eighth note clock in, it represents one measure, and with a sixteenth clock note in, it represents a half note. So we have one measure here. Uh, see, you know, it's, it's multiplying Basically, this is the one measure right here, uh, because right we, we go over here. If this is divided by 8 and divided by 8 clock, we go to the 8th output, that's one measure. We take the one measure output into the clock multiplier, and then we have one measure, and that's going faster and faster, which each, with each output you're going to divide, uh, times 2, times 3, times 4. So you have a half note, and this is interesting, you have a quarter note triplet, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note, 32nd note, 64th note, okay? And then on the 16th note, you can go all the way up to the 128th note uh, based on this. So whatever you set the clock multiplier module to, it can never output a clock with a tempo slower than the incoming slot clock signal. Again, it's the same th message here. Whenever you set the clock divider module to, it can never output a clock with a tempo faster than the incoming clock signal. So they're, they're kind of opposites of each other. 
Uh, one, one of the disadvantages of the clock multiplier module is that it needs to see at least two clock pulses to measure the time in between them to determine what speed to multiply them by. This means on first startup, it won't know what the tempo of the clock is and won't start until the second clock pulse. So imagine the clock multiplier can't see into the future. It can't say, okay, I know the clock that's going to come into me is going to be this speed and thus here are all the subdivisions. What it does is it looks at the time in between one clock pulse and the next one. And then that distance in between in time is what is the base multiplier of all the rest of these. However, um, when timing is critical, it is often best to have a main clock right here uh, that is set to the fastest subdivision that you'll need in your patch and then use clock dividers to get the rest of the subdivisions you'll need. So clock dividers work in a different way where they work instantly. They don't need to see into the future because they have a counter on the inside that's it's counting how many clock pulses have come in and using that to extrapolate uh, the, the division. So, in general, where timing is critical when, when you're making kind of a very uh, particular patch where you know you want things to be re reproducible and, and uh, explicit every time you open the patch, a uh, clock divider is usually the best option. And what you can do if you need like really high subdivisions is you just set this to 64, 30 second, whatever the highest, um, the fastest subdivision of this note that you'll be needing in your patch later, you set that clock to, and then you can divide everything down. And so even though if you have 30 second, you know, the fastest here at the 64 is two measures, you can, again, you can uh, use a second clock divider and have that 16 go into here and now you have again another clock you have this clock divider running into another clock divider and you have more uh, outputs here same thing with this is a clock divider tile it just has a few smaller outputs okay so it's a lot to take in right but the main thing the main thing you should take away from this tutorial is that instead of having multiple clock modules that are running at different speeds and trying to sync all of those up together, you have one clock module for the whole patch and then you use either uh, clock dividers or multipliers or a combination of them to create different subdivisions that we, you'll use to switch between for different rhythms and you can send one uh, to a pad that's going once every measure or something and that that is creating a slowly moving pad that's uh, going through a sequencer and then you can have a 16th note arpeggiator uh, um, that's going on top of that all uh, controlled directly from one main clock where you can change the tempo of everything uh, all together at once so again, just sit with this patch, play with a little bit. Uh, you know, if you've purchased the in-app purchase, uh, you know, come in here and look at the different uh, monitors here and you can see the different waves uh, that are coming out of each of these inputs and really experiment and get to know what these do. However, if you don't get it just now, that's okay, don't worry, just go on to the next patch and things will become much more clear when you see things more in context and you can hear what's happening instead of just looking at these lights kind of flashing and seeing what they're doing, okay. See you in the next one.